This video is a general overview about cell structure uh, in GCSE biology following the AQA specification. So uh, the aim for this video is to give you a general idea about what are the two different types of cells and also um, and looking at bacterial cells, animal cells and plant cell structure and also think about how we use microscopes to observe cells. So first of all, let's think about what cells are. So cells are the basic unit of life. It makes up all living beings. And uh, when we're looking at the two major type of cells, we can classify them based on if they have a nucleus or not. So on the left hand side, we'll first of all think about the cells that don't have a nucleus. Now cells that don't have a nucleus are called prokaryotes. Sometimes we also call them, call them prokaryotic cells. So here we're going to look at the general uh, structure of a, a prokaryotic cell. Obviously different types of prokaryotic cell would have a slightly different structure, but here it kind of gives you a general idea about what most of them uh, would have. So let's start off with the ones, uh, the organelles that are found in most basic cells. So here we would have um, the cytoplasm, which is made up the whole general uh, jelly-like substance inside the cell. And that is the cytoplasm is where chemical reactions take place. Next, we can have the cell membrane, which is uh, the inner part here. And the cell membrane is actually very, very thin that it is usually pushed against the cell wall, which is on the outside of that. So this is the cell membrane. Every cell would have the cell membrane keeping the cytoplasm inside. And the cell membrane is what we call a selectively permeable. It uh, decides and it can control what can go into and out of the cell. The next bit here we've got the cell wall which is uh, surrounding the cell membrane. It keeps the cell shape. Now the cell wall here is different from the cell wall in found in plant cells which we'll look at in a second uh, and it's really important to know that both prokaryotic cells and plant cells have a cell wall but they are made up of two different chemicals. And as I mentioned earlier, the cell wall maintains the cell shape. Next here as well, we would have uh, these little dots here, and these are called ribosomes. Uh, a common misconception is that people think that bacterial, uh, bacterial cells or prokaryotic cells are so simplistic that they don't need ribosomes. But in fact, that they do have uh, a smaller ribosome, and ribosomes are uh, where protein synthesis takes place. They make the proteins. So these are four uh, organelles that we would find in prokaryotic cells and are also quite common in eukaryotic cells, which is the other part. Now we'll look at the a few structures that are quite unique in prokaryotic cells. So first of all, here we've got this uh, big loopy sort of structure here. That's actually what we call the circular DNA. And as you would notice, as I mentioned before, prokaryotic cells are cells that don't have a nucleus, but they do have DNA inside them so that they can code for um, the different types of proteins that they will need. So that's the circular DNA, which is found inside the cytoplasm. Next, we have these two sort of round circular uh, st uh, structures, and these are what we call plasmids. And plasmids are basically extra rings of DNA that contains extra genes that provide a survival advantage. So the difference between the plasmid and the circular DNA is that the circular DNA codes for all the basic proteins that the, uh, that the cell would need. Whereas the plasmid is something that is extra. If they don't need the plasmid to survive, but having the genes that are usually found in the plasmid would help them survive better. For example, maybe having a gene that codes for um, antibiotic resistance, so it stops the bacterial cell from, from being killed uh, easily. Next, we have uh, this one, which is the tail, and actually that is what we call the flagellum. And if it's a plural form, uh, we call this a flagella. So when there's multiple tails, basically, we call it flagella. So the flagella or the flagellum is basically a cell that helps the cell move. It's kind of the same as this tail you would find in, let's say, sperm cells. Then the last one is this structure here, which is basically this extra layer over the, uh, over the whole bacterial cell, uh, covering the cell wall as well. And this is called the slime capsule. 
and the slime capsule acts as a protective layer, it protects the cell. So this is the general cell structure of a prokaryotic cell. So on the other hand, we have cells that have a nucleus and they are called eukaryotic cells or eukaryote. Uh, so basically the most two, the two major common examples we always look at is animals and plant cells, but just be aware that there are other organisms that are also eukaryotic cells, such as fungi and protists. But for this section, we're going to focus on the cell structure of an animal cell and a plant cell. So on the left hand side, we have an animal cell. On the right, we've got a plant cell. And actually, they share uh, certain organelles, um, as you can see here. So first of all, we can see that they both have a cell membrane. Every single cell needs to have a cell membrane because that's what keeps all of the content inside. And as I mentioned earlier, the cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell and is what we call as selectively permeable. Next, they both have the cytoplasm inside, which is where uh, chemical reactions take place. And it's also the jelly-like substance that holds all of the organelles within the cell. Next, we've got the nucleus. As we mentioned, that eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. So obviously, both the animal plant cells would have a nucleus, and which is this major big structure that is found in, in both of those cells. Moving on, we have this little structure here, which is called the ribosome, as we can f uh, see in the, um, the diagram showing the prokaryotic cell. So eukaryotic cells have a slightly bigger version of the ribosomes, but they still do the same function, which is that they do protein synthesis. They make the proteins. And then the final one that they both share is this structure here, which is called uh, the mitochondria. If we're looking at one single one, then it's called mitochondrion. If it's plural, then we, we uh, say it as mitochondria. So the mitochondria is a very, very important organelle that is found in eukaryotic cells, and mitochondria is the site for aerobic respiration. Make sure that when you're writing the uh, function for mitochondria, make sure you mention the word aerobic, because um, aerobic is where respiration is taking place with the oxygen to break down the glucose completely, whereas anaerobic respiration actually happens elsewhere in the cell. So mitochondria is the site of aerobic respiration to release energy for the cell to use. So these five organelles are what is found uh, as common organelles in animals and plant cells. Next, we are going to look at uh, three specific uh, organelles that are found in plant cells, but not found in animal cells. So there are three organelles here. So first of all, let's look at the outermost layer, which is this section here, and this is the cell wall. And actually the cell wall is made up of a chemical called cellulose, and that's what makes it different from the cell wall found in bacterial cells. So this is a chemical called cellulose, and but if they've got the same function, the cellulose cell wall maintains the shape of the plant cell. Next, we've got this, um, this sort of structure in the middle and actually it's not hollow it's got lots of lots of different fluid it's what we call the large permanent vacuole and the large permanent vacuole contains uh, the uh, cell sap it contains lots of water and mineral ions inside the plant and also kind of has a role in maintaining the shape of the plant make sure that you always write either large vacuole or permanent vacuole or even better large permanent vacuole when you're referring to this one that is found in the plant cells because even though that we say that the animal cells don't have vacuoles generally sometimes they can have a small tiny vacuoles that uh, actually can get that can disappear and appear at random depending on how much water there is in the animal cell so you must make sure you mention large vacuole or permanent vacuole when you talk about the vacuole found in plant cells. The final one is this structure here, which is called the chloroplast. Now the chloroplast contains something called chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is that green pigment that is found inside the chloroplast and chlorophyll absorbs light for photosynthesis. So if you're talking about the function of the chloroplast, it is the site for photosynthesis where the plant cells are absorbing the light and then turning it into glucose. Be careful not to mix up chloroplast and chlorophyll because chloroplast is the organelle, the structure inside the cell, whereas chlorophyll is a particular green pigment, it's a protein. And it's smaller and it's contained within the chloroplast. 
So here you can see these are the two examples of eukaryotic cells, animals and plant cells, and their cell structure. Now the question is how did scientists actually find out the uh, cell structure in prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells? And the answer to that is actually using a particular equipment called microscopes. And we've got two types of microscopes, light and electron microscope. So as the name implies, light microscopes use light to help us see the organelles. And they are the uh, microscopes that you would normally use in school to observe any cells or tissues uh, that you've got. Uh, electron microscope, obviously, as the name implies, it uses electron. And actually, there's two types of uh, electron microscopes, if you're interested in knowing more, which is the scanning and transmission electron microscopes. But they are a lot stronger than light microscope in two particular ways. The electron microscope has a higher magnification, meaning that it's able to see uh, s uh, small things in a much bigger scale, uh, because normally cells are so small that we can't see with the naked eye. The second thing is that electron microscopes also have a higher resolution, meaning it's got a better ability in separating uh, two dots that are very, very close together. It just generally means in, in non-technical term, it means that it gives us a clearer and sharper image. In exam questions, the only type of question they ask basically is what is the benefit uh, of using electron microscopes over light microscopes in which you always say higher magnification and higher resolution. Avoid saying things like clearer image or more zoomed in, which are phrases that are not accepted in the exam mark schemes. The final thing is when it comes to cells, we actually got lots and lots of different types of cells. And uh, the body is made up of lots of different organs, which are then made up of tissues, which are then finally made up of cells. So every single cell are specialized to do a very specific function. The process of cells becoming specialized is what we call differentiation. Right, differentiation. And you will learn more about differentiation in the next chapter. But once the cells become differentiated, we call them specialized cells. So specialized cells are cells with uh, specific adaptations which allow them to do specific functions. Notice the use of the word adaptations here, uh, which is actually a technical term. So adaptations mean uh, specific features that they would have or characteristics or structure. So there's quite a few different specialized cells that you do need to know. So the sperm cell is quite a common one. Red hair cells is another, uh, another popular one as well. Uh, Repler cells, which you'll come across again in chapter four in terms of um, the, the bloodstream and the, uh, the different components in the blood. Um, so there's quite a few of them. Make sure that you uh, do learn these ones as you do your actual revision. So just to summarize what you need to know about the cell structure. So there are uh, cells are the basic unit of life and they are, there are mainly two types, prokaryotic cells, which don't have a nucleus and eukaryotic cells, which do have a nucleus and eukaryotic cells are two types, animals and plant cells, which you need to know in a bit more detail. And the different cell types would have uh, different combinations of organelles, which is the term for cell component. And there are some unique ones in each of them. So make sure you know uh, what the cell structure is and also what are the functions of each of these organelles. Then finally, we talked about microscopes, where the two types like and electron microscopes, which are used to observe uh, cells and electron microscopes are, are in some sense stronger than light microscopes because of having higher magnification and resolution power. And specialized cells, which are cells with uh, that have specific adaptations for very specific functions. And please make sure that in, while you are revising for this one, do study the different examples of specialized cells. And this is everything you need to know about cell structure. <laughs>